So welcome, everybody. Taking, uh, thanks for taking time out of your busy day to attend this session. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to get a month ago, we did a session which covered kind of all things citizen developer, what it is, why it's important in business, and then drill down to RPA citizen developers. Today, we're going to go, we're going to roll the sleeves up, go right to work, and we're actually going to build three relevant use cases that will automate the sorts of tasks that you would do every day or every week or every month in your normal uh, business process. So uh, today we're extremely hands-on and we welcome and encourage all questions. And so with that being said, here's your three use cases. First one's going to be simple, send email, and in that email, attach files and then move the files around. Second one, we're going to do a little bit more business side to, uh, to the whole thing, and that is we're going to be sending invoices to specific customers. And then the third, very common, right, logging in somewhere to some web form and actually entering data. So uh, these are the three use cases we're going to cover. And what we can tell you, and here's the introductions, here's a little bit of Audi Alliance. The important thing there is we have over 100 highly complex automations in production. We've been doing this and partnered with UiPath for over five years now. And uh, you see our core competencies down below. The RPA and machine learning is definitely relevant to what the kind of automations we've been building. Uh, there's a little bit about myself. I write a little bit. Uh, but I've already been introduced by Diana. Thank you, Diana. So we're going to get right into use case one. And just a little bit more information from the field about these use cases. So we have, an, we have a citizen developer training and education program where we're training uh, customers like yourself uh, how to become a citizen developer with instructor-led uh, sessions. And what we can tell you is... The use cases you're going to see, the, the participants in our citizen developer training and education program, they were able to build all three of these under tw in under 20 minutes. And I mean 20 minutes apiece, right, or less. In fact, we had a session this morning, and the, part, the new participant built this use case one in closer to 10 minutes. So what we're showing, and these are all non-IT uh, business professionals, okay? So that's how powerful and how effective this whole citizen development movement has become. You really can automate some of the things you do at work, and you can do it fairly quickly, so the business value is there. So the, we're going to lock in on this use case one. We're going to build this. Krishan's going to build it for us. And you'll see him um, break off an email with a, a few files attached to it. And then he's going to go back to the folder where he attached those files from and move those files from that folder to another folder. So I am going to do a stop share and welcome you to our certified RPA expert, Krishan Jindal. Krishan? Thanks, Glenn. A very good afternoon to everyone. Welcome to the Citizen Developer session. So Glenn, if you can share your screen and give me the access so that I can show the use case. You are approved. Glenn, can you help me with your entire screen, please? Yes. Uh, you have access to the screen, and you should have all of them. Yeah, please. And I'll do it one more time for you. So you can be sure to get every single one. There, you should be ready to go. 
Krishan. Yes, thank you so much, Glenn. Just give me the access. Yep, thank you so much, Glenn. So yeah, we are ready to build our first automation. Before like doing the automation, let me just explain you what we are going to do. All right. So here, if you see, there is a use case one. So there are two folders here in use case one. One is archive folder and second one is output folder. If I go to archive folder, you will be seeing there are multiple types of file present here. There is a subfolder as well as sample. So what we're gonna do in this use case is, we're gonna pick only the Excel file through our port, only the Excel file from this folder. We are going to mail those Excel files to the recipients, and then we're going to move this Excel file from this archive folder to the output folder. So that is what we are going to do in use case one. So let's start our automation. So this is our UI path studio. I'm going to create a new task here as blank task. I'm going to name it as Use case one. Okay, so it's going to take a few seconds to load everything. So it is just restoring all the dependencies that are required to build any automation on the UI path storage. So it is just the backend part that it is going to do. And for use case two and three, Krishan will stay inside of Studio X. Therefore, he won't have to go through the restoring dependencies uh, for the next two use cases. And a quick note while it's doing that, the UiPath products, uh, once you install them on your laptop like I have here, that Krishan is using, the updates take place automatically from UiPath down to your laptop. So it's not something you have to concern yourself with or schedule. A nice little reminder pops up that there's an update available and it gives you the option to perform the update then or at a later time. So it's a good way of keeping your products up to date. Krishan, back to you. Thanks, Dan. So it is up here. So before building the automation, the first question comes in our mind that where should we start from? So if I go here, since you see there are multiple files that we have to pick. So it's give the answer that we have to go in the files and folders, right? So if you see there are various components present here, like in the activity panel, like coma and data, Excel, file and folder, mail, PowerPoint folder. So since we have to operate over the files and the folders, so we're gonna expand that component of files and folder. Inside file and folder as well, we're gonna see multiple components as CSV, files and folder. But since we have to pick the files from a particular folder, we're going to expand the file component and we're going to see here activities related to the files. Now, we have to pick multiple files from here. Let's say Excel 1, Excel 2, and Excel 3. There are multiple files. 
So what we're going to do is there is an activity for each file in folder. What does that activity do is it is going to pick each file from that folder and it is going to give it to us. So I'm just clicking here, we'll hold it and drag it here. Now this activity would require certain properties, certain inputs that we want to provide. So first of all, it is asking from where, what should be the input folder. So I'm going to provide it the input folder from where it has to read the input files. Just check me the part. There it is. All right, so it is inside documents. Inside try parts, it is in developer use cases, use case one, and inside our folder. So we have selected the path from where we have to pick the files. Now, if you see, there is a variable as current file. What this variable is, this is a variable that would be holding all the properties related to the files that this particular activity is going to give us. So this activity will provide us each file at one time. Let's say if we're going to run it, it is going to provide us one file at a time. And that property would be holding by this current file variable. Now, if you see there are multiple checks provided here, like include subfolders, whether there is a subfolder inside this folder, we're gonna pick those files as well, but we don't want to pick that. So we will remain it as unchecked. It is also in skip folders where access is denied. So skip those folders where it is required some sort of access. So we wanna skip that because we don't have such folders. If you see here now, there's a filter, whether we want some sort of filters or not. So yes, we only want the Excel file from that particular folder. So we're gonna click here on the plus sign. We're gonna click text. And here we're gonna provide our filter. So for Excel files, the extension is .xlsx. So we're gonna provide the extension. And the naming convention, we don't want any use of the naming convention. That's why we are going to provide this asterisk so that it can pick all the Excel file from the folder. I'm gonna save it. Now it is ready. It is going to give us each file at a time. Now what we have to do, we have to email those files. We have to attach those files in the email. So for email, if you see, there is an activity use desktop outlook. So what are we gonna do? Just drag this activity over here. We're gonna select our email account. So if you see all the default email accounts that has been present on the system would automatically pop up here. So I'm gonna select one. Now, this is just setting up the our Outlook email account. Now we have to send the email. So if we go here- uh, Chris, Christian, Christian, yes. go ahead and send that, go ahead and send that to my eAlliance email. That'll work a little better. Sure. There you go, thank you. So we're gonna search here as send, and it is going to provide us all the activities related to the send. So there is an activity as send email. We're gonna use this activity over here, and it would require certain inputs that we're gonna provide. Like it is asking to whom it has to send the emails, right? So I'm gonna click here, I'm gonna provide an email ID here. Now it is asking whether there would be any CC in the email or not. So right now I'm just putting it as a blank. Now, what would be the subject for the email? So let's say subject would be testing use case one. 
Now, if you see, it is asking what should be the text provided in the body. So there are three options provided for the inserted text in the body. Whether we want to provide any types of images, any types of tables, formats in the body. So in that case, we will select HTML and gonna write up the HTML code there. But if we want to write only simple text, so in that case, we're gonna select the text button over here. We're gonna click here and provide us the text value that we're gonna put in the email body. Let's say, hello bot. This is the use case one. Right. Now, if you see, there is a checkbox here as save as draft. What does that property is? This has been checked by default, but if we really want to send the emails, then we have to uncheck it. But if we check it, and in that case, email would not be sent. It would be just saved as a draft in your mailbox. So since we have to send the emails, I'm gonna uncheck it. Now, this there is large property attachment. So what type, which file we're gonna attach in the email? We're gonna click here. I have already said that in the current file variable, current file is a variable which is going to hold the properties of each file present in the folder. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to select the current file with the full path so that at each run, it is going to pick up the file from that folder. Now that is done, I'm just seeing it. Now our next task is after doing the emails, we have to move that file to the other folder. So if I go to the files component, there is an activity move file. I'm going to drag it here. Now this activity is having certain properties, certain inputs that we need to provide. The first is from where it has to pick the file. So I'm gonna click it here. So we know in the current file, current file would be holding the value of the file. So I'm gonna select the full path of the current file. Then it is asking to which folder this file should be moved. So I'm gonna browse it in the documents. UI path, citizen developer use cases, use case one and the output folder. So after attaching that file in the email, that file is going to be moved to the output folder from the archive folder. And then there is a checkbox over here as override. So what that checkbox is, if let's say in output folder, file is already present, then what should bot do? It will throw the exceptions, right? So to avoid those exceptions, what we can do, either we can override it, so that if that particular file is already present in the folder, so the board going to replace the functionality of the particular file with the same name. So our automation is done. We are ready to uh, rock. A quick note, Krishan, before you run it, if everybody could keep their eyes trained down to the bottom left of the screen, the output right window, that's where you're gonna see the, every automation generates a log file. It's a very easy to read log file. And when Krishan runs his automation here, you'll see the output window uh, update itself with the runtime information of the automation. So if you watch for that, you'll, you'll see that take place. All right, so we are ready to run this program. Okay, so there is some issue with the sign in. Okay, this has not been signed in. So we want to sign it first. Yes, it's that, it's the top one. Okay, so it is now connected. Now we are ready to run. So it has run successfully. So if you see the output panel, it is saying 
use case when execution started. This is the first log that has been generated by the bot. Then it is saying that using this account, the email has been sent. The draft mode is false. So that is for the first file. This is for the second file. And this is for this uh, third file. And the use case has been added in just two seconds. So we have sent out three emails with attaching the files as well in just two seconds. Now, let me just show you the emails sent. So if I go here in the send items, you would see three emails has been triggered by the board. So here in this email, board has sent out the Excel file one. Here it has sent out the Excel file two. And here it has sent the Excel file three. So yeah, that is our use case one. Over to you, Glenn. Uh, do you want to thing, show them? Yeah. yeah. The fault, so, yeah, you got it. Yes, so if you see now, these files are not anymore present in the archive folder. And if I go to output folder, yeah, those files are here now. So those has been moved from my back folder to our output folder. That's great, Krishan. We'll, um, we'll now explain use case two briefly and then get you back on the, um, where you can actually uh, build and demonstrate use case two. So use case two has more relevance, right? Than just, you know, generic sending Excel files around. Here's where, what Krishan is gonna demonstrate is uh, sending invoices to specific customers. Now what he's gonna do, this use case, it's gonna demonstrate the power of the config file in UiPath RPA. You use a config file when you build automations and you can put parameters in there, for example, email addresses and things of that nature. And once you build the automation, if you're leveraging the config file like that, you can go back in and the config file is just a simple Excel spreadsheet. So you can go in and out of that config file later on in the week or in the month or whatever, change parameters there and not have to modify your existing RPA automation. So it's a very powerful feature and he's going to include that in this. So uh, Prashan, I'm going to give it back to you. I'm going to share the entire screen for you, give you the keyboard and um, there you go. I'm doing approve. Mm, Glenn, this is no testing. Can you check it, please? Oh, I'm sorry. I I need to drop this out. There you go. Yeah, no, it is fine. Here you are. And request control. And you are approved. You got it. All right, Glenn. Thank you so much. Now, guys, we're going to see what is our use case too, and that is quite comparatively useful in our daily routine as well. So let me just run through the use case too. So if we wanna go into use case two, if you see there are three folders created with the customer names. Let's say there are three customers with customer A is having the invoice, customer B, is having two invoices. Customer C is having again two invoices. So what we're gonna do in this program is we're gonna email those customers all the invoice present in their particular folder with the use of config file. So let me show you what is there in the config file and what is the power of config file. So if you see this config file. There are three customers present here. We have entered file path of each customer. Let's say for customer A, the file is present at this location. And here we have put one email flag. So let's say today we want to send the email to all the customer, but tomorrow we don't want to send the email to our customer B. So in that case, what we can do, we can just make the flag as N. 
So Y is to send the email and N is for no, don't send the emails. Then we are having email subjects present here, email body here, and to whom we have to send the emails and who is going to be in the CC of the emails. The power of the config file is, let's say in the future, the email ID is going to be changed or you want to change the subject or you want to change the body of the email. So you don't have to go inside your code or inside UI Path Studio X to change those things. You can just simply open out this Excel file, write whatever you want here only, and you can just simply run your program. And it will definitely run without any failure. So this is the power of config file that we going to implement today in our program. So since we have to read this Excel file first, the data, the data should be read. So let's see how to read this file, how to iterate data one by one from this file. So I'm going to open UI path. Let's go back to home and create one more task as use case two. So this time it is quite faster as we have signed in. All right, so what we're gonna do is, if you see there is an activity as use Excel file. So we're gonna use this activity here. And before using that, we have to close this Excel file from here. We have to select the file path of this Excel file. So click here. We wanna go in documents, right path. Use case two here, it is the config file. We have selected that. Now we have provided the Excel file. Now, what we have to do, we have to iterate over each customer present in the Excel file. So, for that, what we're going to do, we're going to expand the Excel activities. And you will see here it's an activity for each Excel row. So this is the activity designed to iterate over each row present in the Excel file. So you're going to drag this activity over here. So it is asking which sheet from the Excel file we want to run, read. So we're going to select sheet one. And it is also asking whether such sheet has headers or not. We're going to select, yes, it has headers. So if you see in the while explaining the use case, I have explained something about email flag. What does that mean is if the email flag is Y, then only we want to send emails. So for that, we have to apply some conditions over here. So for applying the conditions, what we're going to search here is we're going to search if. So there is an activity present here as if. Going to track this activity right here. We are going to build some conditions. So I'm going to click here. If you see, there is a thing as component as condition builder. We're going to click here. And first thing we're going to select here is in which header of the Excel, right, that email flag is. So we're going to select as yes, email flag. And we want is that email flag contains the value as Y to send the emails. So if email flag is Y, then only send the emails. If it is N, then don't send the emails. So we're gonna save this. Now, if you see, there are two things here. 
than and else. So if this is true, then this part will be executed. If it is false, this part is going to be executed. So just to show you what would happen in the else part, I'm going to put a message box here. In the else part, I'm going to put some text here as email flag is false in the config file. All right, but in the case where email flag is true, we have to send the emails. So we're gonna use the same things that we have did in our last use case. So we're gonna select use desktop outlook app here. We're gonna select the email account. Then again, we have to search for send email activity. We're gonna put it here. Now there is a slight change between our previous use case and this use case. In the previous use case, we have provided the hard-coded value over here, like email ID, subject, and everything. But in this case, the power of the config file is going to be introduced. We are not going to provide any hard-coded value here. We're going to select all the values from the Excel file only. So if I click here, there's a current row. So current row is the variable which is holding the value of each row from the Excel file. So if I click here, current row, and if you see, email two. So it has picked up the headers from the Excel file. So I'm going to select here. So whatever the values that particular row is going to be holding, that is going to be select here. Everything is going to be select only from the Excel file. Nothing we are going to select hard coded here. So email subject. Again, we have to select text. We are going to provide the email body as well from the Excel file only. Now we're gonna remove this checkbox. Now it is asking for the file here also. We're gonna provide the file path present in the config file. So it is quite faster than providing the hard-coded values. So we have selected all the values. So this is gonna send the emails to all the customer present in the config file by picking up the file present in the respective folders. So that is it. We're gonna save this workflow. We are ready to run it. So let me just open it. Everything is fine. We're gonna save it and we are ready to rock. Oops. So you see it is throwing some exceptions, but it is saying that this particular path is not present, right? So what does that mean is send email activity, we have provided some sort of path in the Excel files, right? So that is not present on the desktop. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna check the paths in our Excel file. We're gonna open the Excel file. And we will see these paths. So these are the wrong paths. We have to update that, right? So what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna go out here quickly. That's done. Now I'm going to run it again. It is reading the file. Now for the second 
customer, it is saying that email flag is false in the config file. So if you see in the config, the email flag of customer B is N. So that's why it has popped up this message box that we have put in our if condition. Now the activity is executed, Excel file is closed and everything is done. Now let me show you the emails. I'm gonna come here in our mailbox. So if you see, it has sent one email with for customer A with one invoice. It has sent out the customer C invoices. There are two invoices for customer C. So it has sent out these two invoices and for customer B, it has not sent out an email as we have made the email flag as false. So yeah, that is it for use case two. Over to you, Glenn. Yes, I'm, I'm glad it broke on uh, Lucy because I was gonna explain to our audience. Um, yes. In our second session, with Lucy at one of our accounts. She was a citizen developer learning this. She developed, Krishan explained first what he was gonna do, then he then he built the, the actual use case for sending the invoices. And then Lucy built it in session two. And what she did was she populated that config file with her 20 some odd customers, which had 50 some odd invoices, right? Some of the customers had multiple invoices. And she successfully built that on the ver on the second session, that exact use case. And then she explained to us that now saves her six hours a week. So in one session and building an actual automation within 20 minutes, she has now bought herself an extra six hours a week so along with the time savings that she demonstrated that was a benefit, the other benefit was typos because she would make typos and manually sending those invoices to those 20 some odd customers. And the third benefit, and this is the one a little bit harder to measure, intangible, but it, but it has high impact, high value. And that was peace of mind. She no longer had to worry about that task being done because after building the automation, she simple, simply scheduled the automation to run at the different days of the week in which she does that. So um, that was the use case you just saw, immediately saved one of our citizen developer students six hours a week. And um, Krishan, if, if you wanna show my bright, I launched my Gmail account. If you want to show them uh, the the emails that were sent to my Gmail account, there you go. Sure, Glenn. So if I open your Gmail account, so you will see Port has sent out the emails. So that is for customer C, and that is for customer A. So it has sent out two emails as customer B was flagged as false. So in the spirit of um, uh, being time sensitive here, before we proceed to use case three, uh, Diana, do you have any questions that have been sent to you so far? We wanna make sure uh, before we dive into use case three, before the hour's up, we wanna make sure we get to any questions the audience has so far? No, no questions so far. Okay, then um, then Krishan, if you wanna take it away, I'll just move down to this next slide here and yes, a brief please, explanation. Yeah. This is something that every, most, most office workers do. Log into a particular website, enter data into a web form. So this is a really fun one, a very relevant one. And um, Krishan is gonna demonstrate the power of what's called the anchor functionality in Studio X RPA. Krishan. All right, Glenn, thanks for explaining. So our third use case is RPA challenge. 
So basically, this is a website over which we have to make some entries of the employees. So if you read out from here, the goal of this challenge is to create a workflow that will input the data from my spreadsheet into the forms below the screen. So we would be having one spreadsheet, we can download it from here as well. So we have already downloaded it for you. So if I'm gonna open that particular file, So you would see there are 10 employees whose data has been entered here in this Excel file. And we have to enter the same data into the portal right here, and we have to submit it. All right, so now there is a challenge. So if you see right now, role in the company is at the top of the base. But once you submit it for the first employee, the field has been changed. Now the role of the company is something in the middle and all the headers has been changed here around, right? So the challenge is if we train the board to enter this some text over here, like phone number here, but on the next run, phone number will go somewhere else, but board has been trained to put the text on the field, right? So it is going to type the phone number here. So that would lead in the failure, right? So what we have to do is we have to click the start button and then we have to type out all the data present in the Excel file for each employees. And we have to take care that we are typing the correct data. Otherwise, we would see the result. Let me show you if I click the start button and I am not entering any of the field right now. I am just submitting it with the blanks. And if you see here, it is going on as round three, round four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and that's 10. So if you see, it is saying that your score or success rate is zero as we have not entered any of the field and we have taken this much of time. So it is calculating everything, even a single field which we are entering. So for automating this, this is the Excel file that we have to read the data from, and let's do it. Now, let me go to the home again, create a new task as use case three. Now, the first thing that we have to do in this use case is we have to open up the application, right? That we are going to use. And the application is RK Challenge. So to the open this application, there's an activity present here. The first activity that is use application and also. So we're gonna drag it here. Now, if you see, there is something written here as indicated, indicate application to open. We have to click here. Now it will navigate us to select the screen. I'm gonna select this RPA screen. I will just click a left click or anywhere in the window and it will capture the link of the particular site. Now it is having certain properties. If I click on the properties tab, you will see there are certain options. So it is asking when we have to close this particular website, so I would say, Never close it. Now it is asking when it has to open and I will say, open it if not open. That means if the site is not open, then open and please don't close this site. Now, after opening this site, the first thing that we have to do is we have to click the start button, right? Right before entering the data. So that whatever the entries we are going to make here, that should be count in our result. So we are going to search here with click and it will give us an activity with the name as click. We're gonna drag it here. Now we're gonna indicate, click here. Now indicate this is start button. So if you go to start button and just hover for a second, it will capture all the selectors related to the start button. So let me just explain you what selectors is. Selectors are nothing but the path by which 
the UI Path Studio can determine which element it has to click. So I'm going to click left here and it will capture all the selectors from the backend. I will just click confirm. Now it has successfully clicked the start button. Now what we have to do, we have to read out the data from the Excel file and for each employee, we have to type out the data there. So in our previous session also, we have read out the data from the Excel file. So for that, first of all, we have to use, use Excel file activity right here. We're gonna select the Excel path right here. File is present here. We have to select this file. Now everything will remain the same. Again, we have to use the same activity that we have used earlier for each Excel row. We're going to drag it here. We have to select the sheet, which sheet we want to read. That is sheet one, and it is having headers. Now we have read the data from the Excel file. Now what we have to do? We have to type out the data. So for typing the data, there is an activity as type into. So we're going to search type and it will give us that activity. So we're going to drag it here. Now it is asking indicate the field where it has to type the data, right? So we're going to click here. We're going to application and we're going to select this field where we have to type the data first. Now, okay. So before doing this, this activity, this browser activity only works with in the attached browser. So I just want to show you that pop up so that you would be known why this is going to be used inside the web browser, right? So if we don't use inside the web browser, so it is going to pop up the sort of error message that you have seen earlier, right? The indicated element does not belong to the target application, right? So what we have to do, we have to go here, we have to again use application browser activity right here, we will again indicate the browser and we will put that activity inside it. Now, there are certain properties that we need to check here when we want to close it, never, and open it if not open. Now we're gonna select the element on the browser Okay, so we have to take this activity again and delete this, just now I'm set, selecting the field for the first name. Now, since those fields are not like uh, static, those are going to be changed continuously. So we have to select the anchor as well. So anchor is the nothing but the header of that particular field that is going to be present wherever the field is going to be moved. So if you see in the blue color, there is an anchor written here. So it has selected its anchor and we have to confirm that. That always enter the first name where you will find this first name anchor. So we will confirm this. Now, we have to select the data from where it has to pick. So it is going to pick the data from the Excel file that is present in the current row and the first name header. So the first name would be typed here correctly. Now 
similar things we have to do for rest of the fields. So we're gonna come here, we're gonna select role in company. Now it will automatically detect its anchor. So we're gonna confirm that. Now we're gonna select the value from the Excel file that is present in headers as role in company. So we're gonna do that for all the fields present there. So similar way, let me do it more quickly. So add a system. Now we're gonna do for last name. Confirm. And we're gonna select the data from the Excel file for last name. Now, we're gonna select for phone number, anchor is already indicated, confirm. We'll select the phone number from the Excel file. Select email. I'm gonna confirm that. Select the value from the file. Now the last field. That is company name. And confirm that. Now we have to select the value of company name from the Excel file. Now we have entered all the field. Now we have to click on the submit button. So we're gonna search for the click activity right here. We're gonna drag it here. And we're gonna submit, check the submit button. So that is confirmed. Yeah. And Diana, we're going to just make it. We know you're going to uh, want to take a few minutes at the end with a few notes that you have. So I think um, I think Krishan is uh, ready to run this. This is great. Yes, we are ready to run this program. So I'm just saving it and run it. So it is going to open up the application. You start the challenge and putting up the data from the Excel file. See, the first name is right there in the middle of something at the down of the portal, but it has picked up and tried to collect it in each fields. Now, the fields uh, have been changed, but it is writing up the data correctly. And a quick note to the audience, the robot types two and a half to four times faster than we do. So you'll see this data get entered pretty quick. So the anchor functionality uh, prevents, like when the user interface changes, 
your automation prevents it from breaking because it's anchored to the correct field name, regardless of where it's positioned on the web form. So it has entered so we got 100. all the fields correctly. And you see the score rate is 100%. That and is great. Krishan, thank you. Uh, Diana, I'm doing a stop share. So you can have the screen for your closing remarks. You're on mute. I did not get any questions in chat, but if anybody would like to ask any, any, I've um, allowed you to unmute yourself. Feel free while I'm loading my slide. Yeah, so I just wanted to share with you a few things that are happening at UiPath um, fairly quickly here. The first one is a program on reboot your skills. This is a 10 day class um, where you're involved with experts from UiPath. It's to kickstart your journey and they'll teach you how to do RPA. Um, and the registration ends on May 4th. So if you want to register, you go to the link that I put in chat um, and you can find information on the America site about how you can get involved in this um, to reboot your skills and the kickstart journey. So that's coming up pretty soon. Um, please consider that. Again, it's an excellent program. <clears throat> the second one is that UiPath is doing an RPA survey, and we're happy to share this with people. If you register for this, um, we'd love to get this community involved in providing input. Um, and again, if you if you participate, if you go to the, the URL I sent you and add that, you have a chance to win a $50 voucher as well but um, we're, we will be running this through the end of May and look forward to anybody who can respond. And that is what I had. So did anybody have any questions? Okay, well, great. Well, thank you for being here today and Glenn and Prashant, I'm just really happy um, that you were able to participate in this and really appreciate your presentation. It was fantastic. Thank you for taking your time, everybody. Hope you saw the power of uh, UiPath RPA. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everyone.